Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up for this volatile Tuesday, the 21st of March, 2017, just after 4.20 p.m. Central Standard Time. Big down day in stocks, and we definitely turn the tide on a number of these markets. Let's take a look and see what I'm talking about. You're now on a down thrust. I, I don't recall the last time I've said that. It's had a been a year. Uh, in the S&P, you've now got a pattern where the market has broken through previous lows. So right now the market is moving into that pattern on a weekly chart. When we come to a daily area chart of closes, it's certainly in that pattern as well as you can see. When we go to the bar chart, you can see why. You've now broken through all the previous support that you had. So now you have one of these patterns with the swing line, and that's what the brown line is. It helps you measure previous tops and bottom in a very certain way. And it looks for apexes. So what we have are lower highs, lower lows. Now what the market can do to negate this pattern is in the next 48 hours, two days, take out today's high. That's all it would have to be done, and I would have to change the patterns on the chart. But right now, that's where you're at. And more important, you did this under the 18-day average of closes, so that gives the bias down, the trend down. As we take a look, you hit the lower Bollinger Band, you settled under it. The odds of staying under it, 5% of the time, but that's only the first day. So you could add to that if the market wanted to. And the question is, does it take the sideways action and blow it out? Or does the market pull back into it and develop more sideways action? That's what we're all going to be looking for tomorrow. In terms of momentum, the market is now oversold. So instantly it got to a 28 reading. So it's oversold under the lower Bollinger Band. Those are the things the bulls have going for it. The bears are going to say now nah, they've turned the trend down, and I'm agreeing with them until the market gets over 2378.75. Dow Jones, same pattern. Let's start here. Oversold. Lower highs, lower lows. Today's high, also the key. 20,917. Take that out in be it on, uh, let's see, that'd be Wednesday or Thursday, I'd have a different attitude about the chart pattern very quickly. Take it out on Friday, no. That would just negate the downtrend, but this could be a different pattern change if the market were to uh, spike up. Then we get to the NASDAQ, same thing, and not oversold. It's still got momentum pointing down. Lower highs, lower lows, under the 18-day average of closes. What happened this time? Well, you didn't even stop at the 18-day average. You have to go all the way back, and I mean back into areas I'm not even showing to see when that's happened. So this is important action, and it's a chink in the armor, and I'll discuss why in a second here. In the Russell, the Russell's got the lower and low, the higher high, and it fell right into the Bollinger Band against the 100-day average into a condition that's oversold looking for the support. So what's happening is we're looking at the, uh, the Trump ACA, where they're going to take out that Affordable Care Act, trying to do so. Does President Trump have enough votes on Thursday to do it? If he does, this break will be quickly dissolved. If he doesn't, the word is that that means his tax reform package gets pushed back as well, and that was enough for this market to let go. Obviously, if you've been watching uh, Neil Gorsuch's uh, drilling on uh, Capitol Hill right now, it's pretty nasty. I mean, if you looked at uh, Dick Durbin from Illinois, <laughs> Al Franken, they're no friends of him. They just want to make up for President, Ob President Obama's choice not getting a hearing. But again, President Obama was on his way out. He, doesn't, he isn't entitled to have picked the, uh, the president, the, the Supreme Court justice as president on the way out. It generally goes to the next person. I know that there's arguments on that, but that's not uncommon. But obviously sore losers on the Democrat side. The VIX did not break out of this area. 
it's still stuck in the sideways action. So as much as the break is today, we need to see the VIX confirm it's breaking out and putting this as a base in the market. That would be bearer stocks and stocks to get further follow through, maybe even embed in order for them to say, ah, this is a bigger break than people think. Now we understand in part why the bonds are getting a rally, some safe haven buying, kicking them up. They might be headed back towards this 150-20 area. Now the hard part is in buying the futures contracts for this. You do understand you're looking at from what the Fed said, two more rate hikes. You dropped back to around 249 or so intraday and even lower than that, I think, by at the end of the day in the 10-year yields. And we were up at 26 when the Fed was talking. So you can see that it's hard to do that. And I'm looking for the resistance in the 10-year note to be 124.11. Dollar index, another low close under the lower Bollinger Band, but with yesterday's rally back over it, you're just working and riding that band lower. And again, I made it clear, I don't understand when people keep saying the dollar's in an uptrend. It isn't. In the June euro currency, you've got higher lows, higher highs, riding the upper Bollinger Band in an overbought condition. When the dollar flips to the upside, this will flip to the downside. But right now, this is getting the bid in large part also because of the French debate uh, that went so well on TV for the centrist candidate, not the fear of Miss Le Pen taking them out of the EU. Even the pound got a big rally today, very surprising, up 126 points against the uh, 125.04 area. The market has a pattern of a lower and low, a higher high. It stalled first at the 100-day average. Now, if I'm right, the upper Bollinger Band will give it a run for its money. And in the Japanese yen, it's doing exactly what I was talking about the other day, higher lows, higher highs resistance, the combination of the 100-day and the upper Bollinger Band, just like the British pound. But everything's moving against the dollar. This love affair with the dollar under President Trump, done, over. Now we've got to see the next phase. And as I said, he can put it all back together if he gets his health bill passed. Don't get that passed and we're in for some rocky road. May crude, breaking down another four 0.5 million barrel bill. They were not looking for that. That's almost double what the trade was looking for. So that was bearish action, and you can see how you're going. You might be headed into this $46.5 mark before it's all done. Now, the gasoline did see a big draw taking place, about 2 million barrels. So you're getting this basing action. You've lost the embedded reading. It's going to take the crude to drag this, given its own wherewithal. This market probably is ready for a pop back to that 18-day uh, average of closes. And in the nat gas, you're up to the combination of the 100-day average and the Bollinger Band. Let's assume you were in the market and you were along this. Do you think when you're watching my videos, you start putting this together and seeing natural, what I call, areas that... Uh, you see where the pros might be taking money off the table? I hope you do, otherwise you shouldn't keep watching because that's what this is all about. The other part of what it's about is me presenting to you things that you don't see that often anymore. Let's face it, advertising on the big stations, uh, Fox, CNBC, uh, BNN, I can go on and on, Bloomberg, you can't do it, it's too expensive. So what you're done with now is looking for people like me that put out videos like this to offer you things that you don't see everywhere. And price counts are one of them. It's no charge for this. It's free. We send out everyday charts on different markets where we're getting a pattern that sets up a first, second, third count. Idea, markets broken down or taken off to the upside, where might it go? That's what it's about. You say you can't do it yourself? Nonsense. We give you a PDF that explains it, videos that show you how to do it, and the charting software, all if you want to do that as well. So sign yourself up for the free price counts. There's no subscription fee at all. Give it a try if you want on your own as well. We have it in different versions of our charting software, and I think you're going to really like what you see out of this. How do you get it all? It's simple. 866-973-2077. That's our phone number. You can go to our website. You'll see a carousel of free offers. You can click right up here now. And when you do so, if, you're, if you see that icon and it works, just click on it. That means you're watching us from a YouTube uh, video. It'll open up the form, fill it all out. We'll take the rest of it for you. And on some websites, they even take these videos and frame them. 
and then they'll say click here underneath it for a form that you fill out. Either way, it's all free, no charge. Why not take advantage of a tool you're just not going to see elsewhere? I'm Ira Epstein. You have a good trading day.